will share my experience uh, on the topic of roadmap to digitalization or industry 4.0 technology in the in the manufacturing industry. Uh, from my experience, what I've seen in Tata Steel, uh, being a part of this major transformation uh, over the last three years, and what I understand of Tata Steel even prior to that, and also with my experience globally around the, uh, with many, many uh, companies across industries. Now, when I talk about a roadmap, I would like to highlight that are, in my view, my personal view and experiences, there are seven dimensions uh, to create a roadmap for adopting a technology leveraged business transformation. First and foremost, uh, and I will cover all those things in details, but first and foremost, it's mindset. Second is we have to give ourselves a reference architecture, a macro and a micro, or you can call it a centralized or a decentralized reference architecture that you can lean back and refer to in every phase of your journey because it's a long haul. Number three, there has to be a data framework. And it is the most important aspect that how do you do data democratization while you transform by leveraging industry 4.0 or digital technologies per se. The fourth dimension is integration. And I think I will talk about it again in detail. Uh, I believe that maximum value is lost at interfaces because of siloed nature of businesses or departments within a particular business. Right? And the maximum value can also be optimized at the same interface. So the integration becomes a very key aspect. Adoption is yet a very important dimension because that is the uptake by the user. If your technology solutions are not going to be leveraged by business, then there is no value that will come out of the transformation and it will be a wasted cost. Number six is a benchmarking and we'll talk about it, external as well as internal. And number seven and most important aspect and the panel just before me was talking about uh, the use case of the business case driven. The result has to be measured and the investments have to be made in line with the ROI or the return on investment for each and every business use case that you pick up for the transformation. So let us not talk about the seven dimensions and the slide that uh, is in front of us. The only message out here is fundamentally there is nothing to uh, be demotivated about it. Uh, I read this slide as manufacturing as a whole has a significant scope for digital transformation going forward. Although we are tad below the global average, uh, while the financial institutions of the high tech and the retail uh, are always leading a digital transformation because there is a lot of data and the uptake has been much ahead of manufacturing industry. But right now with the industry 4.0, I think we have a fantastic headroom uh, to cover and that's an opportunity for us to leverage. Uh, can somebody move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So the other, so before I cover this slide, I will drop a little bit uh, uh, or a few, few information on the mindset. So the point is that when it comes to manufacturing, we have to create a belief system first, right? And uh, the belief system can be developed over a period of time. And there are many methods of doing so. What we did in Tata Steel, I would articulate a bit. So we started our journey with, with a reverse mentoring uh, initiative. And so we are very proud of this initiative because where we actually encouraged the people, the younger people in the age group of late 20s, early 30s to become mentors to the senior leaders in the organization, including the CEO and MD and, and that level. And the reason we did so is that the thinking that the younger, the next generation is bringing in and the, the technology adoption and the lifestyle that somebody talked about, we need talked about it the, in the panel prior, and, and completely agree that they are more comfortable in using technology, right? And they, they know the art of possible and they, they think differently. How the senior leaders can open their eyes and change their belief system, change the conservative or the orthodox thought process by learning from the younger generation, that's very important. So that is something we did. The second thing we did, and I would suggest that we should learn from each other. We should, we should go and see uh, whether we learn from the West or the companies in India, but across industries, not restricted to manufacturing, go and see what other companies are doing. And there are so many forums today with, with all online now, it has become even more easier. I think we should invest time and money to, to go and learn from others and see what can be implemented in our respective organizations. 
right so these two initiatives actually and the third initiative was to is to do some say proof of value proof of technology proof of concept to just to tell business that okay this works and there is a use case there is an application just just to kind of bring in the art of possible these these are very important initiatives to create the belief system before we embark on a very formal strategic journey of a transformation in a manufacturing organization how we started we started with a vision that we need to be a digital leader by 2025 that's our corporate strategy one of the corporate strategies and uh, digital is one of our strategic enablers we gave ourselves a mission statement that we need to drive an ebitda improvement that is a bottom line improvement of around 14000 crores uh, three years back and we gave ourselves a timeline of around 4 to 5 years and we are on that journey uh, and that's that's an audacious goal but that also gives us a north star right if you will then what we did is we as a team we uh, worked together and created this uh, reference architecture that i was talking about and i think every company i have seen follows more or less a similar strategy but i personally believe that uh, many companies would when you talk about digital transformation starts from analytics and artificial intelligence visualization dashboards it is fine and something needs to be done in parallel but i personally believe that you need to build roads before you build the cars uh, so there is a huge amount of upfront investment especially in india given our demography and given how the manufacturing companies the locations we operate in especially if we are mining that we have uh, the network the connectivity the fundamental infrastructure uh, so it's it's very important because you cannot create an app and give it to the user and without a network uh, fitting into the app this is not going to work right fin humongous investment on to cloud because cloud, we have moved from 100% on prem to uh, to 85% on cloud and that has given us agility given us speed given us data democratization huge investments in sensors on the sensor technology right but you have to keep the business case in mind uh, because just arbitrarily putting in sensors doesn't help so it is the level 1 system level 2 systems and the application the level 3 systems these are all the data aggregation and the acquisition systems which will go into your the data layer which fundamentally creates the the lever for data democratization the idea of digital in my view is to create that the decision making power the empowerment and the insights if you can lend to every individual user and that is where the data gets democratized uh the the business starts using it the uptake improves and it becomes a much more insight driven organization right and that is where uh, the fundamentally we want to move so data becomes the macro it gives us synergy and speed uh, cloud is a vehicle right and it also gives you the localization of the the micro strategy and ai broadly defined is the analytics insight and the artificial intelligence which which gives you all the business insights that that you probably need right so this is the architecture and this is the three phases or the three phase of transformation that we are leading cloud data ai as a report from tata steel cloud we are done data we are halfway through we are doing lot of ai we have around 560 models that are running in our operations today but a long long way ahead uh, as somebody said we have to our next journey is to go remote uh, to take manufacturing and steel making from on site to off site and that is an audacious goal by itself let us see where we go in the next 3 to 4 years right so let us move to the next slide yeah so the other aspect once we have done this the the architecture is there and there is a transformational road map and we have taken care of the data or the single version of truth but the most important aspect comes as i was saying is is how to integrate systems and not operate in silos right so the digital transformation journey what we have done we have pivoted around four or five distinct platforms and what we mean by platform is it is a conjoint between the different business processes uh, which are different departments but they're all feeding off from the data from the same platform let me give examples if we talk about connected assets this is coming from the sensor layer this is driving reliability and predictability in our manufacturing shop floor fundamentally we are putting in smart sensors we are working with the oems we are reading all the sensors that are already there and analyzing the data several parameters to create that whether this equipment is going to break down can i can i can i avoid an unplanned breakdown or a or a planned shutdown and if i can do that then my predictability and reliability improves and my production realization improves and that's a bottom line uh, improvement as well as a top line improvement uh, 
So that is a platform we have created on the connected assets. This is coming from the sensitization strategy. Connected processes, many companies you would agree are operating on local optima versus global optima, and most of us do. There is a lot of merit in local optimization. Many, many departments will always drive the, the individual business unit um, uh, heads will always look at local optimization. But there is always a merit in global optimization because we might have to take a trade off if you take from the raw material purchase to the raw material distribution to production to again finish goods. Sometimes you might have to choose the different blend than what is a local optima blend for a local operation, but globally a different blend will reduce the cost, right? While providing the same amount of quality or yield or energy or throughput. So we call it an integrated margin management program where we focus on global optima versus local optima. And it is a lot of analytics and a lot of advanced analytics that is, that is working behind. The other aspect is the connected stakeholders. I will divide it into two. One is the connected customer, the other one is connected people. So today we are able to, with use of technology, be able to track every people who are coming into our plant premises because it is all geofenced and track them as long as they're inside the works and before they leave. And from a perspective of safety, because in our industry, and I'm sure any other manufacturing industry, there are, there are dangers, there are hazards. And if we can track people for the safety and we can intervene at the right time, and the real time, and somebody talked about in the panel before, that we are collecting data every two seconds in the, in the connected platform, right? And we are able to intervene whenever there is required. And due to the integration, what we have been able to see that if somebody is working in a hazardous area, is the person having the right permit to do so, the right training to do so. So that integration is enabling a better decision-making, a better outcome, not only for the individual worker, but also for the company. As well as we can also track unproductive hours and loitering around and stopping pilferages, security. The entire COVID response actually was driven out of this platform because it got immediately repurposed to real-time identify risk at the gate, who can come in, who should not be allowed to come in, and who should be given medical intervention because we could identify the red risk, the green and the amber risk from a COVID health perspective, uh, depending on some questionnaires and the tracking that we are doing, right? And then there is a 360 view of the customer uh, we are selling steel online and we are very proud of it and more of it has to be done. Uh, we, our services and solutions are also being sold on an online platform today, right? So moving on. Uh, so we have talked about the mindset. We talked about the reference architecture, talked about the, the data framework that we have given ourselves. And then we talked about the integration. So all that it has done to us has given us a huge amount of access and harnessing of data, which is the new oil as everybody talks about or uh, it has become the, the new, new uh, engine to drive any organization to become an insightful organization. So this is very important that how are we measuring the shift in the work paradigm? How are we measuring the rise of digital worker? And we have to look at what I optically look into the slide and see is every graph pointing Northeast, right? Or, or potentially going forward North, that what is the uptake? Is the technology being used by business? Otherwise, it doesn't make sense, right? It, it will not make any sense if the technology is not used. The investment will go waste and it will become a wasted cost, right? And then the data monetization in the, in the bottom uh, right corner, that's important because we have to take that view that how much of the data that we are creating is being monetized internally. And if you wish, you can also externally monetize, right? And that is the uptake. You can see that there is a 212% CAGR and we are expecting more uh, to monetize the data internally and uh, fructify the business case uh, that we have been talking about because the transformation has to be owned by business and their KPI, the key process indicators or the objectives and key results have to move. And data is, is business doesn't consume application. Business consumes data and insights. So that's the point here. And we are measuring the uptake. Moving on to the next slide, please. See, the other aspect is that we have to look outside and look inside from a benchmarking perspective. So the point is that unless we compare ourselves to our internal benchmarks, best ever performance and try to better it and try to better, better that even uh, in the subsequent phases and also look at the external benchmarks. So we have looked at World Economic Forum, Global Lighthouse, our European operation is a global lighthouse, our Kalinganagar operation is a global lighthouse and most recently the Jamshedpur operation, which being a 110 year old operation being also a global lighthouse from an industry 4.0 perspective. So that's an internal external benchmark. Uh, because we, we, we then understand and feel confident that the journey that we are undertaking, the, 
And the inputs that we get from the external world gives us that much needed boost in confidence to go forward. We have also got similar uh, awards from Wall Steel, uh, looking at a Gartner assessment to see that, okay, how we are faring from a from an IT technology perspective, enabling the industry for auto transformation and all that, right? So external and internal benchmark is important. But then after that, what remains most important is the results. Whatever you are doing, we are, we are making a lot of upfront investment. What is the ROI? Am I spending a dollar and getting $10 back, $7 back or $3 back, whatever the case may be. And there is a process to do that. There is a Deming process we follow to see every dollar spent, what is the return that you are getting? Right. If we don't get a return, I would suggest that let us not invest in the technology because just for the sake of investing in technology, it will not transform anything. It is not, it is not going to create the business value that we are all here to create. So that's all I would say as the seven dimensions of, uh, of a transformational roadmap. This is the journey we are on. And I have seen many companies across the globe taking similar journeys. You're learning from each other. And with that, I am, my time is over. And I would take a pause here and... Uh, giving it back to a picture. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity.